of the letters written by our mother foundress after she entered religious life. This and the following one are the earliest which have come down to us. It was written just after Fray Seferino Gonzalez, Bishop of the Diocese, had approved the newly established congregation with a decree dated the 30th of December, 1876. He gave it the name of Adorers of the Blessed Sacrament and Daughters of Mary Immaculate. Two young ladies from Velez Malaga, Ana Maria de Biza y Guerrero, age 22, and her sister, Manuela, age 35, were anxious to join the new institute. They belonged to a group of generous young women who were under the direction of Fr. Antonio Ortiz Urwela. It was he who had inspired and supported the new congregation. The elder sister preferred to consult Mother Pillar. The younger, Ana Maria, confided in Mother Rafaela Mary, the superior of the community of novices. Cordova. The 10th of January, 1877. Pax Christi. My dear Ana Maria, I was beginning to wonder why you didn't write and to fear something had happened when your letter arrived. It came as a great relief, thank God. I am not a bit surprised to hear what is happening to you. It's just what you should expect. It would be strange otherwise. How do you think the world is going to treat someone who is about to leave it? But my dear, isn't it true that Jesus is helping you? He cannot fail to do so, since he himself told us that his yoke is easy and his burden light. We find it heavy only because we rely on our own strength. Let us lean on him and not be afraid. Yesterday, Thursday, we had the blessed sacrament exposed the whole night. From now on we shall have night exposition every Thursday. We had a sung mass on the feast of the Epiphany, and we shall have another, please God, on the purification. Far Antonio continues to give his fine instructive talks. They are well attended. Many people also come to Mass and visit our chapel during the day. God grant that they benefit from all this. We have many Masses now. This morning the whole community heard three. Our number has increased since Anita entered yesterday. Goodbye, my dear. Courage. Close your ears to temptations and keep your eyes fixed on that holy mountain where Jesus suffered that you might become his spas. May he fill us with divine love. This is the wish of the last and least of his servants. Mary of the Sacred Heart Two. To Miss Maria Manuela de Biza Cordova The 10th of January, 1877 my dear friend in Jesus, it was a great pleasure to see your writing. I can see that our Lord's Spirit is working in our hearts. Let us give him many thanks for his goodness and give our hearts to him without reserve. He will smooth everything out. What happiness we find in his service, don't we? But this does not mean that there are no crosses, for there are, and very painful ones. But I think that they become sweet if Jesus touches them with his precious blood. Write to me whenever you like. I shall not be able to do so very often as I have a great deal to do. Pray to our Lord very much for me, and I, though unworthy, will do the same for you. Encourage Anna until that day comes when, if it is his will, we may love and serve him together in holy rivalry, and helping each other may arrive at the happy end. This is what I desire. Yours in the Lord. Maria of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 3. To her sister in Cordova. Difficulties arose for the novices who had stayed behind in Cordova after the departure of the religious of Marie Reparatris, for the bishop took it upon himself to make substantial changes in the way of life the community had followed from the beginning. He had been formed in the Ignatian spirit, and rather than agree to give up his rules, he decided against making their profession, and hurriedly left the city by night on the 5th of February. They found temporary accommodation in the Anjujar Hospital, run by the Sisters of Charity. The superior, Sister Antoni, thought highly of Father Antonio, and it was at his request that she received them so kindly when they arrived in the early hours of the morning. The next day, 
Mother Foundress wrote to her sister, who had stayed behind in Cordova with three novices, telling her how they had settled in. The governor of Cordova was very fond of the community. Eager to have the novices back, he discovered their whereabouts and dispatched a telegram, ordering their arrest. It is to this order of the governor that Mother refers to in the next letters. Anjujar. The 7th of February, 1877. My dear sister, as you probably know, we had a pleasant journey. We could not be better off than we are here. The sisters are taking such good care of us that I don't know how we shall ever repay them. Yesterday, I gave the superior 25 duros for whatever she may need to buy us by way of food. I also gave her an idea of what we normally eat, as she won't allow us to do our own cooking. We do serve ourselves and keep the dormitory and sitting room clean and tidy. We are actually living in the enclosure, a great honor not granted to anybody else. Father came to visit us and let us know some details of what has happened. Today, at 3.30, he left for the capital of this district. We'll see what is arranged. Last night, a government official arrived asking for 14 young women who had run away, carrying smuggled goods. He had orders from the governor of Cordova to put us under house arrest. Be brave, I take it that you two are arrested. What does it matter? Bot is above everything, please write. Here we are all well and in good spirits. They all ask to be remembered to you. An embrace to you all. Maria. Four. To her sister in Cordova. Father Antonio Ortiz Urwela went to Anjujar on the 6th of February. Early the following morning, he left for Yin to legalize the canonical status of the novices. Before his departure, Sister Antoni told him about the detention order that had been issued the previous evening. He informed Mother Foundress of what was happening and urged her to stand firm in her decision to keep the rules intact, in spite of the pressure they would be subjected to in Cordova, if they were obliged to return there. As soon as he arrived in Yin, he wrote further words of encouragement. It is to this letter that Mother Foundress refers. Anjujar. The 8th of February, 1877. Pax Christi. My dear sister, Thank God that we have heard from you at last. I have spent two sleepless nights thinking of what might be happening to you. The day after his arrival, Father left early for Yin to talk to the bishop. The previous evening, as soon as he arrived, he went straight off with the chaplain to look over a convent to see if it would do for us, for I think he wants us to stay here. To tell you the truth, I'm not keen on staying, for though it is fairly large, it is really only a village after all. But I am ready to do whatever God wants. I did speak of this to Father, but I can see that people here are anxious for us to stay. We shall see. Yesterday, I went to see the mayor, because it seemed wise to introduce myself to him on account of the telegram. He was most charming and gave me full permission to go wherever and do whatever I wished. In the afternoon at 2 p.m., he came to see us with several people from the town hall, on the pretext of seeing the house. They promised us all sorts of assistance. I just can't tell you what a keen interest the Marquis of Karasna showed in all our affairs. He is a relation of the owner of the convent. Today I received a letter from Father Ortiz, written yesterday. He believes I am in Cordova and encourages me not to give in. He thinks that it is probably the telegram from Cordova which caused this journey. Tomorrow there is a jubilee here. They have brought a harmonium and are busy practicing the singing. I am put to shame by the marks of appreciation shown to us by everyone. I must stop now, I'll write again tomorrow. My love to you all. Mary of the Sacred Heart. 5. To Miss Anna Maria de Biza. The novices had been so well received by the people of Anjujar that the question arose whether it would not for them to stay there rather than go on to Madrid as originally planned. Mother Foundress waited for God to show his will through the turn of events. Anjujar. February 1877. Pax Christi. My dear and unforgettable Anna. 
I received your kind letter with much pleasure, and I am grateful for your sincere wishes. A thousand thanks to our good Jesus who helps us so much, and never allows us to suffer without giving us much greater consolation at the same time. May he be blessed for everything. We are all very well here, but it has not yet been decided where we will eventually settle. The people here are very fond of us. We shall see what our Lord disposes. I shall let you know as soon as it is settled. Five, to Miss Anna Maria de Biza. The novices had been so well received by the people of Anjujar that the question arose whether it would not for them to stay there rather than go on to Madrid as originally planned. Mother Foundress waited for God to show his will through the turn of events. Anjujar, February 1877. Pax Christi, my dear and unforgettable Anna, I received your kind letter with much pleasure, and I am grateful for your sincere wishes. A thousand thanks to our good Jesus who helps us so much, and never allows us to suffer without giving us much greater consolation at the same time. May he be blessed for everything. We are all very well here, but it has not yet been decided where we will eventually settle. The people here are very fond of us. We shall see what our Lord disposes. I shall let you know as soon as it is settled. What a joy it is to be able to suffer something for our dear Jesus. I am quite overcome at seeing the honor our Lord does us in allowing us to suffer for him. We are all very happy and think ourselves fortunate. We are not at the hospital now, but living in a rather big, cheerful house. We follow our rules in part, and above all there is a wonderful spirit of union amongst us. Saint Gertrude used to say that our Lord doesn't do great work because he does not find well-disposed souls. Beg him to make us such, and that we may surrender ourselves entirely to him, so that he may do just as he likes without any hindrance on our part. Courage, my dear. Let us serve our Lord perfectly and let hell rage. What does it matter? I have no more time now. Your true friend in the Sacred Heart. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. To Miss Maria Manuela de Biza. Anjujar. February 1877. Pax Christi, my dearest in Jesus, I am most grateful to you for your note, which proves to me that your affection is sincere though I did not doubt it. May our Lord show you my gratitude by showering his graces upon you. Beg him to grant us the grace to correspond generously with all the favors he is constantly showing, now more than ever, since he is giving us the joy of tasting a few drops of his chalice. Love our Lord very much for me, and let us become filled with the folly of the cross, as he our loving spouse was. Let us put all our trust in his divine goodness, so that he may do with us whatever he likes and as he likes, without ever finding a single obstacle on our part. Will you please tell Anna that Father has not forgotten her? He hasn't written, because he has had so much to do. He wishes her to become very holy and love God very much. Let her never forget the immense graces she has received from our Lord and cooperate with them, and not lose even one of the many he is constantly giving her. Now I must stop for one of time. Pray to the heart of our Mother Mary to help me to imitate her most holy life perfectly, whether in Bethlehem or on Calvary. I will find a little place near her for you and Anna, where you can learn her sentiments and make them your own. That is my desire for you. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Seven, to her sister in Cordova. Ein Jujar, the 10th of February, 1877. Dear sister, I received your letter last night. We were delighted because we are always longing to hear from you. Things are really beginning to move here. The Marquise, the owner of the convent, is more than willing to let us stay here for as long as we wish. But as he has made his will and left this house to his mother, who lives in Madrid, he thought we should put our request to this lady, 
in case someone causes trouble about it in the future. People keep coming to see us, urging us to stay, Ramon wrote a very affectionate letter the day before yesterday. Consejo's brother Juan has come today. He is with his sister's now pillar, who was always called Maria de la Paz. We celebrated a jubilee here yesterday. Our sisters sang, and apparently people liked their singing. That far Antonio preach on the first of Our Lady's sorrows. I think he means to go on with these sermons every Friday. We don't go out at all, though I went to visit the mayor the day after our arrival, and in the afternoon went to look over the convent with the superior and Santiago. There is plenty to be done to make it habitable for us. We have been told that there are many vestments, candlesticks, etc., which we can have with the house. Father is very pleased. I stay with him for a little while during his meals and in recreation. I wish you were here so that you could see to his meals. If only I were a better cook. I'm sorry now. The novices are all very happy and good, so submissive and united among themselves. Sister Casimiro is growing visibly in virtue. She shows me even more affection and confidence than when she was there. The same can be said of Sister Ampero, and in fact of all of them, Sister Pelagio is as strong as a horse and has a good color. Sister Pedro is the same as ever, so pleasant. Maria del Buen Suciso as well. Maria Paz is a little depressed occasionally because she says the Lord does not treat her with such joy here as he did there. Perhaps because he seems so far away on the altar, however, she too has her happy moment. The lay novices are all well and as happy as though they had always been here. Paula has a better color. If anyone is coming here soon, let her bring the lace that Sister Ampero was making. We also want the pattern for the lilies so that Guadalupe can go on making them. Please tell my dear Consejo that I hope they will be very careful to collect everything and leave nothing behind, for poor people need everything they have. Tell her to send some needlework if she can say that I received her letter. I'll answer it as soon as I can. My best wishes to the Archdeacon and to all our friends. Tell them that we don't forget them and ask them to remember us in their prayers. The same goes for the Sisters of Charity and the Nuns of Saint Anne. A big hug for Dona Angustias. Tell her I am looking after her daughters now more than ever. They are very well. I am so grateful for all she is doing that only our Lord can reward her. No earthly reward would be enough for her. Tell the chaplain that I hope he won't forget us. I am very grateful to him for all he has done for us since I first met him, and for all he is still doing. I'll pray every day for him. An embrace from all of us here to all of you, an especially big one from me. Mary of the Sacred Heart. When there is a chance, please bring the music. Eight, to her sister in Cordova. Manuel Castilla Godoy, a former servant in the poorest household, served the nuns faithfully until his death. He was porter of the Madrid house. When this letter was written, he had just arrived in Anjohar, bringing with him a lay postulant, Encarnacion Hot, who later took the name of Don Ricardo Miguez, who had quite a lot to do with the vocation of our mother foundress and sister Maria del Espiritu Santo. She had stayed in Cordova until her mother gave permission for her to join the novices in Anjohar. The novices were still living in the hospital, but as a separate community from the Sisters of Charity who ran the hospital and had a school for girls as well. Anjohar 15 February 1877 Pax Christ My dear sister, your letter was brought to me by the two innocents, Manuel and Encarnacion. God bless them. I have been to look at two houses today. I don't like one of them, but the other, just opposite here is more to my taste, and if the bishop gives permission we shall settle here, I think. God grant that it may be soon. People keep coming to see us as before. Every evening Father preaches to the two communities. This evening, we began the devotion to Our Lady's Seven Sorrows, 
our sisters sang the litany, and the other community, a salve to Our Lady of Sorrows. They sang so badly, and I thought I would die of anguish. I should like you to try to get some good music for us suitable for the devotion of Our Lady Sorrows. I know it will be difficult. I want the novices to practice so as to sing it here, as I couldn't bear to hear that awful thing again. Many people come just to hear the novices sing, and though we ought not to consider that too much, still, those who hear them will derive some spiritual fruit, and we should do all we can to attract people to hear the sermons, whereas I do believe that if these girls go on singing they will scare everybody away. Manuel will bring the mantillas and your headdress. I do not forget you all. I only hope that we shall soon be together again, or that everything will be settled. Please God it may be soon. Give my love to Concejo and to Santa, Matilda and my kind regards to anyone who asks after us. May our Lord grant us what we are longing for so much. Your affectionate sister, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Nine. The people of Enjohar became more and more anxious to have the foundation in their town. The town council to whom the hospital building belongs reiterated their consent for the novices to stay there as long as they needed, seeing that they had been unable, for various reasons, to move into either one of the two convents, which had been offered them. However, the visitatrix of the Sisters of Charity influenced by unfavorable reports expressed to the superior her opinion that the novices should be asked to leave. Our mother foundress refers to this at the beginning of her letter. Anjuhar, the 18th of February 1877, Pax Christi, my dear sister, as Father is writing I think he will tell you everything. You see we are having our trials and tribulations. Blessed be God in everything. I am filled with strength and courage, for I have placed all my confidence in our Lord, knowing that he will always help us, for we desire only his honor and glory. Sor Antonia is so upset at our plight that I have to cheer her up, she is afraid for our welfare. You could send the beds and some mattresses on Monday as quickly as possible, for I want to move out to another house on Tuesday, if we can whichever is ready first. The novices as usual are quite unaware of what is going on, they are very happy. An embrace for Concejo and Matilde. May our Lord bless us always is my wish for you all. Your sister, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, P.S. I received the note yesterday. I shall write to Don Ricardo and Don Benito. In the meantime, give them and all our friends my very kind regards. Ten. To her sister in Madrid. Reverting to their first idea of founding a house in Madrid, Father Antonio Ortiz went to the capital on the 20th of February to discuss the matter with his friend and compatriot Cardinal Morneau, Archbishop of Toledo. Within a few days, however, Father Antonio fell ill. As soon as the two foundresses heard the news, they hastened to Madrid with their brother Ramon and a close friend, Carmen Gomez, wife of the late Senator Raul. Mother Rafaela Mary stayed there until the 4th of March. The following letter was written the day after her return to Anjohar. Her sister and Carmen stayed with the sick priest while she followed his progress with great interest. Anjujar The 6th of March 1877 Pax Christi My dearest sister, Yesterday I hadn't a minute to write to you, but as I was afraid you would be worried, I told Sister Casimiro to write. I arrived here about 10.45, and before going to see the novices and the Sisters of Charity I went to the hospital church to receive communion. Sor Antone met me at the station. Nothing much happened while I was away. The novices are even better than when I went, they observe silence just as when we were in the convent, 
and as far as possible they keep to our rules and customs. Thank God for everything. Sister Pelagio was the only one I found not so well. She had one of her usual attacks of nerves, but I know her now. The others were afraid she would get worse again when she saw me, but just the opposite, I made her better, and she is still all right. I am thinking of father all the time. Only for God's sake have I come away. I am longing for the post to have news of him, and I hope you will tell me everything that happens. I beg you not to hide his condition from me. I feel more strength than ever to help me bear all that our Lord wills to add to my cross. Tell our dear Carmen that I have passed on her message, and I am praying for her. Tell her not to forget me, she knows she may ask me for any favor she likes. She has had a rest now after all our trotting about, but if she feels as I do, it will seem as if she has not moved out of doors. I am not writing this to father so as not to trouble him with reading so much. I only desire is to do all in our power to get him well again. I have asked the sisters if they know how to make seltzer water, and they say they do. I have written to the Bishop of Yin. The Bishop of Cordova has been in his diocese since 24th of last month. I enclose a letter from Don Ricardo for Father Antonio, and another which he wrote to me. The time for the post has come and gone, and there is no letter from you, for the love of our Lord, don't let this happen again, as I am so anxious I have sent you a telegram, let us see if that makes you right. My kindest regards to Father Antonio ask him to give me his blessing. An embrace for Carmen remember me to Don Tomas. My love to you in Jesus. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Thank you.